back, WNST, Towson of Baltimore. Baltimore positive or positively in beautiful Lauraville in Baltimore in the 45th. We're at Coco's Pub. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. I got instant lottery scratch offs here. It's been a lucky batch. I'm going to give some away here uh, to the uh, friends and staff here at Coco's. Uh, we are going to be celebrating 25 years. It cost us two weeks from now on August 3rd and then Drug City on the 4th. Next week, we're in the county at the Beaumont uh, in Catonsville. All of it, of course, brought to you by our friends at Window Nation. Uh, the sloppy floppy hat. My wife <laughs> washed this and got it all stiff. It's nice. So it fits nice. It looks nice. It's all good. And and uh, Senator Corey McRae is our guest. It compliments it. It's hard to take me seriously in this, I know. So I look like Gilligan a little bit. Uh, and the Orioles give out their floppies as well. So, look, you know, from, from the, the standpoint of what you do, and I would ask you this, when you go down and you're chairing this or sitting on this, and I mean, take, take us back to the first year you're a delegate down there, just waters, you know, drinking it from the fire hose, right? Now you've been elected a couple times. Yep. Uh, people are clearly pleased with the work. Enough people are pleased with the work you're doing. I'm sure there's a complaint department for you uh, <laughs> waiting at the end of this segment as well. Um, but for you to go down to Annapolis, see these changes, and be involved with it, I'm going to give you the two questions that are the tough questions, yep, right? Yep. What are we doing about crime? Let's start with that. Yep. What are we doing? The, the first thing is making sure that we can support our uh, current state's attorney. I think that folks think that he's doing a good job, Ivan Bates, and making sure that we're supporting our police commissioner, and that's interim commissioner uh, Richard Worley. I've known Rich uh, because he was the police commander in the Northeastern District for a significant amount of time and feel very confident in what he's going to be bringing to the city in that position. And then I think about like our new state's attorney and this is important because when we went down there the people overwhelmingly elected uh Ivan Bates and one of the things is is that Ivan Bates isn't like a traditional or this or this or this uh known um elected official he came in and he hadn't been elected so he didn't really know the legislature he came in with a bill this past session um that basically said that he wanted to align the penalty for carrying illegal handguns for those that are 18 to 20 were receiving five years as the sentence and those that were 21 and older were receiving three years we all know with the justice reinvestment act that you're not doing that entire five years necessarily you're not doing the entire uh uh three years if for those penalties you're doing about 25, 30 percent of that time. So that's about 18 months or maybe three years from now, that. Standpoint. All of these people are coming back home. So they're coming back home from that standpoint. So he wanted to align. Every that. time I talk to somebody like you, this is almost the first thing you bring up is we can put people away and shame them and, and try to educate and try to rehabilitate, whatever the word would be for all that. Yep. But at some point, they come back and there needs to be a better something better so a better for path forward a better right. path has, forward has to be so so one of the, so one of the things is is that he couldn't find a bill sponsor and i was like what do you mean you can't find a bill sponsor your your agency anybody can put in a bill uh um uh by the request of that respective agency so when he said that i said i'm not for theatrics i'm not for this let's just get it done and his bill went across so we got it done everybody pushed a green button for it and we're thinking about that so you have your stick but you also have to have the carrot piece of it we're working on education from the blueprint for Maryland, we're working on. That was my next question, by yep. the way. I'm glad you tackled that because yep. crimes first, Crime. and then education, and and that's. If I'm a citizen, if I'm voting for you or not voting for you, I'd say we got 20 minutes to talk about anything other than the Orioles or summer weather, how good the crab cakes are. But like, the, the crime piece of this is the glaring piece that haunts. Every, murder, ray, crime. So, so when you think about that, and that's the young folks want to have fun. So you got a young population that's going to be in Fed Hill, Canton, things of that nature. But when you're thinking about having the family and when you're settling now, the two things that you think about is, are my kids safe and are they going to be well educated from that standpoint? So that's what I think about each and every day that I wake up as a father of and four. And you live here. As a father of four. Yeah. And I live here. Yes. So I'm thinking about the eight-year-old, the nine-year-old, my 14-year-old, my 16-year-old, what is the education that they're going to receive in our school system, whether it's public or private? Mines go to uh, uh, Polly, uh, just got one that's already 11th grade at Polly and one that's going to the ninth grade at Polly. But one of the things that I thought about, me and my wife had this tough conversation. She's a teacher also, but like... What does she teach? She teaches third grade, so she's All been right. teaching third grade for the last two decades. Third uh, grade is my favorite. Do they still do planets and dinosaurs in third grade? They have fun in third grade. Now, third, third grade, grade is very one of my fun. favorite... 
what? But, oh. but we had hard conversations when we got to middle school because you're thinking, I need my child to have the most robust, rigorous academic experience within our school system, whatever they're going to. And I was lucky because we had the ingenuity program. I think that that's one of the best things that Baltimore City Public Schools has going on is this ingenuity program. Unfortunately, it's only in four schools. It's in uh, Roland Park. It's in Hamilton. Um, it's over in... Uh, Oh, my God. I can't think well, of it. Your child would have to qualify. You, you have to qualify for this right. program. So that was one of the things that I, I, I think about from that piece of it. And we've been blessed because we've had two matriculate through the process. They're in poly now, but they're in the ingenuity part of poly from that piece of it. So that is that is covered. But how Ingenuity. Do we, I like how, that. How do we make sure that every young scholar is getting that same experience as uh, ingenuity? How do we make sure the parents feel the confidence that they're doing? We have to make sure that our and, – and this is one of the things I'm proud of. First, the place that they're going to. In any urban jurisdiction across the country, you will not see them building buildings as fast as the city of Baltimore are doing. In the last five years, we put 23 online brand new school buildings. That's not happening across the country in Detroit, Philly, New York. Any, I feel any. that way in Dundalk. I was at the Heritage Fair a couple weeks ago. Yep. The Heritage Fair is, sits on Dundalk Elementary. I mm -hmm. played Pop Warner football okay. there with John Rollo. A bunch mm -hmm. of, we, we practiced there. And it's a brand new school. Yep. I went to Colgate Elementary. It's built a hundred years ago. Brand new school. Took Johnny O a little while. By the way, Johnny O is going to be at my anniversary <laughs> nice. uh, at Drug nice. City on the fourth. Um, but and and Dundalk High School as well, which was you know old and falling apart, completely new. I mean, this is something I, I that I would say that you would go to other places. I might be in L.A. next week screwing around, just seeing like. Are they building new schools? Not, not like, not I mean, like I remember it was always yeah. Howard County building yep. new yep. schools here. Yep. Harford right, County yep. built some schools. Throw Montgomery right? in there. Throw Throw Montgomery. Me, I, I don't know. I don't spend any time at Montgomery County, yep. so yep. I don't, you know. Yep. But, but at the end of the day, like, that's one of the pluses that You sound like a guy that goes to Annapolis now, Corey. <laughs> 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 the, 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 like... That's one of the pieces to the puzzle. But then you think about, like, the inside of the school, making sure that we can uh, raise teacher pay and what are we thinking about from the folks that are educating our young folks, making sure that school is not the traditional way that me and you see it uh, or went through it at one point in it's time. It's not a blackboard but and notebooks. Not, it's not. not at all. It's, it's also having to make sure that you have the mental health piece of it because a lot of our young folks are going through things at the home, and we need to make sure that that's uh, explored and make sure that that's thought about when they're attending school. Also thinking about from a food standpoint, Standpoint is we talked about the food deserts, but some of these young folks, if they're hungry, how are they actually using their mind to be able to learn from that standpoint? So these are some of the things that we're doing, and we're partnering with our eds and meds. So when you think about Hopkins, University of Maryland, being able to partner and think about the health aspect within our schools, that's an important piece to this puzzle, and that's some of the things that we're working on each and every day in the city of Baltimore or when we go to Annapolis. We talk about Kerwin and the impact of that, because I spent a lot of time before it happened, and Obviously, the governor fought at the time, tooth and nail. What, about a year and a half? I mean, obviously, COVID was a, a big part of the mess. And your wife's an educator. Talk to me about Kerwin and this money and what you hear about the things in Annapolis. Because, you know, it, it wasn't popular everywhere because it came at a price tag. Right. All, all things cost money. All yep, good things yep, cost yep. money, including Coco's Crab Cake. <laughs> So I'm laughing at you because you gave me a hard time about my water on this uh, carpet, but now I see yours over there too. So what are you talking? The water? The water. The water. I, no, I got a lid on. Oh, it. you got a sippy cup. Okay, okay, okay. The Harbaugh lid, the lid, dumped the lid. water all over my equipment at the Super Bowl ten years ago in New York, and, and he's been giving everybody else a I hard have time been, ever since. Uh, a just over the top bad guy about anybody having liquids near my computer. Yeah, but back back to Carolyn, I think that that's one of the most important things that we can do as a legislature and thinking about like what does what does the economy look like? What does it look like uh, 10, 20, 30 years from now? I keep talking about setting that foundation, especially as an entrepreneur. So we're making sure that our teachers are well taken care of. We're making sure that we think about careers that they're going to be entering into. As an electrician, that's one of the things that I think about apprenticeships and everybody not going to want of our uh, distinguished How did you become an electrician? What, 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 what went into that? Did you did you have a shop class? At, where'd you go to high school? Nestor, I went to a couple high schools, so I was had a couple challenges, but I ended up graduating and coming out of Fairmont Harford on Harford and 25th. But I tell folks, I found out about an act by accident. My mom reached out to the Maryland Department of Labor. She said, send me every apprenticeship in the state of Maryland. She said, Corey, go fill out applications. I went to fill out applications at the IBW uh, Local 24 and ended up getting lucky, and I was 
accepted into it. I didn't have to know anything about electrical, so I didn't have to know what black, white, green is. I didn't know anything from that standpoint. As long as I, I don't had, know anything about like ohms and ohms like, law. The man, I took a class and I like I I would. If some electric in my house is screwed up, I'm calling you. I'm calling right, somebody right, I knows say, what I was going to say, but so so from there, being able to not just be used to the full blocks that I was used to in the city and being able to work around other folks that were doing things productive, that's how I actually started buying houses up and down Bel Air Road. It was some journeyman electricians that I was working around that had some uh, rental property that had, had property, and I said, I could do the same thing he doing. He ain't no smarter than I am. And started to model that in the space that I was in. But like mine's is you just needed to have a good attitude. Wanted to come and learn some of the basic functions of coming to work on time and things of that nature. And I learned everything else on the job while getting paid. I had a, a, a business partner of mine say to me recently, trying to hire local people mm. to run a cash register and it can't make change. Mm. Because the math skills of they're being taught or they learn that there's just this real basic, to your point, like showing up on time and what a job is and what a commitment is and what your word is. And, you know, and you said something right off the bat that tells me a lot about who you, you're like, I had some challenges, but my mother blanked. You know, my, mm-hmm. my mother got involved, yep, right? Yep, you yep, said my yep, mother got yep, involved. Yep, yep. Well, I mean, if your mother doesn't get involved, you know, you're, you're going to have a challenge to begin with, right? Yep. So like having that, that foundation yep. of somebody saying to you, you can do better than this. You yep. should expect more from yourself, yep. right? And I just think about, like, some of the basic skills we take for granted. So I think about uh, getting to work on time. Every day my, I was supposed to show up at 7 o'clock. Well, one day I actually did get a flat tire, and I get there at 7.15, and the general foreman's come down, why are you late? And I'm like, well, I, I'm never late. But he said, you didn't pay attention to the parking lot. People are here 15, 20 minutes early. And from there, I've always come 15, 20 minutes early because that's what I learned at that moment from that experience, from that standpoint. That's a football coach you thing. You're not early for the meeting, you're late. You're not five minutes early, you're late. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. like, that, that was something that I learned. And I've never I've, – I've always come and practiced that behavior ever since then. But I learned it on – and I'll tell you the job that I learned it on was Patapsco on 7th uh, Avenue. We built the courthouse right there. So that was probably 20-some years ago when I – I had that experience. And then I think about... I called like, you an engineer earlier, electrician. I, 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 it began with an E. My wife's an engineer. Sorry about that. <laughs> then I think about, like, <laughs> some of uh, some folks may not always know about the banking piece of it. I forgot that early on in my career, I was actually cashing my check at the check cashing spot. And then I actually had a young lady. Uh, a lot of our companies will hire our young folks. So I'll look for some of the high schools where they have 11th or 12th graders that may be looking or interested in this. And she was in Emerson Village. She was attending Emerson uh, High School, but she was cashing her check at the check cashing spot. So we had to redirect that piece of it or that thinking to say, hey, you're paying them 2 3% by the time you uh, get your check from that standpoint. Why don't we h- hit some of the other things that we need to put in place to make sure. So I forgot that that was what I was Understanding do banking. Yeah, understanding banking from that piece sure. of it. But but some of those same behaviors that we we do, we forget that we've done it and our young people are modeling, modeling or going through the same things. And we have to break that cycle. Senator Cormac Craze here. We're at Coco. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. I'm giving some lottery scratch-offs away here today in beautiful Lauraville. We'll be in Catonsville next week at the Beaumont, then on the Dundalk for the 25th anniversary. We're in the 45th year. He goes down to Annapolis when he's not uh, doing ohms and uh, uh, amps. Amps and ohms, right? Is that Amps right? and ohms and voltage. You forgot voltage. I forgot voltage. <laughs> well, you're further along than me, but I have a good attitude about learning. <laughs> um, the Orioles sports, you got – I mean, this is – this has been a little bit of a resurgence, you know, and the one thing for me is uh, any word down there on what they want uh, this from the stadium? I mean, like, you're the first per- you're first elected, that's a molar word, elected, that yeah, I've had on. But, like, I'm getting a little chapped. I'm getting a little burned. I didn't like him lying to the media about, well, I'm going to open my books for you. I don't like being locked out every night where my, uh, my employees allowed in and they don't allow me access. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of things I don't like about it. But I do like when they're winning and the feeling it gives people and watching that. I mean, baseball's a great thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I was the proponent of building this stadium. I'm a proponent mm-hmm. of keeping the team and all that. But th- – it needs to be more of this and less of what we've had the last 30 years, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. this is fun. It's, yep. it's great. No, it's, it's, it's a great. great time in Baltimore It, it, right it now. really yep. is, but it, it, it should be this way every yeah. year. And, and tip the cap to the NFL for what they do because they tend to keep teams competitive. Mm-hmm. Even in Cincinnati, they have a chance mm-hmm. now, right? Man, I think the, the legacy that uh, Donald Schaefer uh, set when he – 
made sure, sure the stadiums were here. We need to also make sure from that standpoint. So the legislature uh, was able to work with Prince George's. We're able to work with our surrounding jurisdiction to make sure that when we look at our budget document that we also see the stadiums as a priority. It's an economic engine, not just for the city of Baltimore, but also for the state of Maryland. Well, and I guess we forget here, I mean, it's, it doesn't take you long to bring up PG County or uh, they hate it when I yeah, call Yeah, I was going to say don't be doing that. Prince George's <laughs> County. I'm sorry about that. They freak out. Gorgeous Prince Why George's. Why do they freak out? Michael I, Steele almost threw a crab cake at me. I do not know. I do not know. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a Prince out. George's thing, it and I, I let them have it. Yeah, so, I don't yeah. – you know, okay, I'm sorry, but – so <laughs> Prince George's and Montgomery County, th- there is an us and them. I yep. mean, there really is, and, like, I guess – I don't feel it. We don't feel it. But if you're in Annapolis, you feel it. And if you're fighting they for this side, they want to make sure they're sitting at the table. Well, but the same thing on the, in Western Maryland, Eastern Shore, where they don't really understand Laurelville and they don't get all the density of population here and yep, yep, why yep. you know all all of the issues that they have different issues yep, there, right? Yep. And they want money to solve different yep. problems. No, right? and as one Merlin, we have to figure it out. Like, we have to figure out all these dynamics in these other geographic jurisdictions and make sure that we come away. And that budget document, that 60 plus billion dollar budget document, reflects it. Well, the Crab Cake Tour has been such a gift to me on so many levels. First, the excuse to have people like you buy and hang out with Marcel and meet nice people. But I took this thing on the road two summers ago. Since last time I saw you, actually, we were here with masks. And in the summer 21 and, and then again in 22, my wife and I did 30 crab cakes in 30 days. I did 31 last year for my 31st anniversary on radio. <laughs> and we went to Deep Creek, Lona Coning, Cumberland, Rocky Gap. Rocky Gap is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Eastern Shore. I didn't even know you were allowed to get off 50. I just thought you yeah, went straight, straight to Ocean City. Yeah. I, I didn't even realize that there would be Suicide Bridge up I here. I was going to say, I had the, one of the best crab cakes. It was Suicide Bridge. That's a great uh, place, it, it dude. Was, it, that was a nice one. That Don't, was a good one. I, right? That was like 10 years ago that I had that. That was like 10 years ago. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell Marcella because I'm about to have her crab cake here. Because I'm not... I, I'm equal opportunity about crab cakes. You know what I mean? People are like, you like them a certain way. I like them good. I like them fresh. I like them tasty. Well, this is home. I like them this the way you right make here. them. Yep, I like the yep, way, yep, way you yep, make them. Yep. Is the way I'm, I'm going to like it. But I got a tip on Suicide Bridge over in Eastern Shore, and I went over there. It was the first day of the tour, and I ate it. And I'm sitting. I was alone. I went down alone. I was Dennis Colazzo gave me this. Big old Bronco, big blue Bronco. It was brand new. It was the only one that had it. People were staring at me in this truck. It was crazy from Coons Ford. And I had the first crab cake and I had a beer. And I was just going to Ocean City to start the tour. The Marlin Open. I had the mayor on the next day down at Harrison's. I mean, we had the whole thing set. 30 crab cakes in 30 days, right? Mm-hmm. And I ate that crab cake, and I took two bites of it, and I'm like, yeah. man, I've been eating crab cakes my whole life, and this is really it's, it's a How one. can it's I go crazy yeah. for the first crab cake on the first <laughs> day of the tour? I've gone back four times. This is a true story. My wife and I are going, right before our anniversary, two weekends, we're going to see Tommy Comwell and the Young Rumblers mm. in Dewey Beach, and I promise you she's going to say, it's only like 14 miles. If we just go south off of 404, we can grab a crab cake, get right is, back. Yep. And she's going to want to go because yeah. she loved it that much too. Yeah. And people say favorite. I tell you what, if you're on the Eastern Shore, there's a place called the Old Salties as well. It's in Hooper's Island. Okay. You got to want that crab cake. You got to want that crab cake. I mean, it's way down, <laughs> but it's the most beautiful drive. Have you been? I don't want to out you here because you, you know you can't be everywhere in the state. You are representing people in the 45th. But have you been down down to the swampy area below Cumberland? Have you been down to the Blackwater Refuge and seeing those birds and the fish? Mm-mm. It's the most beautiful. Take your children. Okay. Take your children. You get when you get to Cumberland. Mm-hmm. If you you were going to do suicide bridge, make it left. I've been on sixty eight. I've been on. Right, I've been so, on seventy. So so just make go not Cumberland, Cambridge. I say Cambridge. Uh, my okay, okay. Cambridge. Forget it. Forget okay. what I say. Cambridge, Eastern Shore. Okay. You want to go south out of Cambridge. Uh huh. Toward Hooper's Island. Okay. And you want to see the Blackwater Refuge. It's only a ten minute drive from okay. from fifty. Uh huh. Get off and go see the birds, see the eagles, I'm, see I'm the fish. I'm going to tell you, we did a committee tour. We did a committee tour. So I was there when when I was on ENT in the House of Delegates, and we did a committee tour over there. All right. Well, I want to make sure you get over there. Yep. Again. It, it's a great state. That's all I'm yeah. saying, you know? It is. 
Representing the people in the 45th. Thank you very much for coming by. I know Appreciate I got to get you, you out of here, Appreciate man. Appreciate you, man. Any, any message for the people, Summer? Anything man. they can do to help you in the 45th? Uh, just make sure, just keep betting on Baltimore is the most important thing. Like I said, I think that all the pieces of the puzzle is there. Um, I just want to lift up, Nestor, thank you for coming to the 45th. Thank you for picking the, one of the greatest spots in the 45th uh, to be at Coco's. Uh, I'll say it one, two, three more times. Um, but most importantly, we're doing each and everything that we can do diligently for the citizens of Baltimore to make sure that it's a great place that's walkable, that's safe, that we can educate our young people. Well, I appreciate you coming on and being accountable. And it's not easy, you know, talking about the stuff, right? And it's, it's harder to try to fix it, right? I feel good because every day I wake up to be inspired to do something. I have something to do. All right, take your kids to Blackwater. Take them out to, 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 to Rocky Gap. Take them out to, to Deep Creek. Go. Rodericks took me fly fishing. On the North Potomac leg, I don't know, it's by Luke, Maryland, mm. Western Port, Maryland. Yep, Maryland. And I'm out in, in my waders fly fishing out there using lefty craze techniques, you know? And I'm, mm. I'm thinking to myself, this is a great state. I don't even yeah. need to go to Montana to do this. I don't need to go to Louisiana to have that marshy. I just go over to Blackwater. And then we mm. got Ocean City. Got Baltimore. We got the Orioles. Second place, soon to be in first place. All right, I'm going to take a break. Uh, Dave Shinen is here. He's got his sports writer hat on. I don't even know what that is. He looks like, we look like we're going to the track is what we look like we're doing. Uh, it's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. Uh, we're going to let ourselves play. I'm giving these out. Uh, it's the 25th anniversary of WNST. It is the 50th anniversary of our friends at the Maryland Lottery. A lot of lucky scratch-offs. Our friends at Window Nation send us out on the road. We're going to be at the Beaumont in Catonsville next Thursday, and then on the 3rd at Costas, the 4th at Drug City, celebrating 25 years with lots of friends, lots of guys. If you have a Cito Suck shirt, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for anything that is a picture of something I've done over the last 25 years that I have forgotten. There's been beer involved, so sometimes I have forgotten some things. So uh, if you guys have pictures, send them over to me, nestedbaltimorepositive.com. Big thanks to uh, Senator Corey McRae for stopping by. We've got Peach Cake here from Fenwick. Uh, the gals are starting to get into this, I think, over here. They've been making crab cakes. I, I've been watching the gal make the crab cakes back here. She's got the gloves on, and she's like, it's just like she knows how to make them softball <laughs> size. And they're the biggest crab. Nobody's ever made a crab cake that big at home. You know what I mean? It's just this big. So I'm watching the crab cakes get made here. We're having fun. We're Coco. Stay with us. It's Baltimore Positive at WNST.